hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this video is very highly requested uh, you guys asked me to do a video on how to approach questions that have drug ads so this is a group of challenging questions guys that needs efficiency and managing time more than anything else instead of reading this whole two page drug ad uh, we want to pick the most important information relevant to our case, right? Uh, so we're not going to read the whole paper, right? So what I want you to do, guys, at first is uh, what the physician will essentially do in the clinic, right? So number one, what we want to do is define what our patient wants, right? So the patient's complaint or his diagnosis. The first thing I want to know is whether this drug will actually help my patient. So I need to know the proper diagnosis, okay? So this drug says that it's uh, it improves the outcomes of patients with heart failure. So does our patient have heart failure? This is number one. So I need to define my patient. So it says here, that there's a 72 year old man with congestive heart failure fine amazing but does every patient with heart failure uh, will benefit from this drug so this drug says that it's an SGLT2 inhibitor this is the first thing I want you to read guys in the drug ad which is this intro it solves a lot of problems here it's an SGLT2 inhibitor this is the mechanism approved for the treatment of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and so this drug works for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So is our patient a candidate for this therapy? I need to know if my patient has reduced ejection fraction or not, right? So that's the first thing. Number two is all about side effects and contraindications. And that's what questions will hammer you with. So number two is all in the patient's past medical history. His comorbidities, his medications, and even, even his social history of who lives with him at home, or does he remember medications, and so on and so forth regarding the route and all these stuff. So once you know the patient's correct diagnosis from the vignette and number two, his past medical history, his comorbidities and other medications, you would be able to prescribe the right drug and know whether what is advertised is actually suitable for our patient. The other questions will then ask you about the graph at the end or this box of safety information and stuff like that. But usually the first question targets the patient regarding those. So this is what we're going to sum up in such patient. Here's a 72-year-old man with congestive heart failure. So the first part of the equation is good. He has heart failure. But we want to know whether he's the right candidate regarding the ejection fraction. Right? So his complaint is shortness of breath and fatigue, which is a common complaint in patients with heart failure. He has to take breaks and all this stuff. He was actually hospitalized six months ago for acute decompensation and has adjusted his medication. He says he has had difficulty remembering his medication regimen. And that's important, guys, regarding whether this drug is going to be taken multiple times a day, right? And assisting with compliance. It's important to keep this in mind. He has a history of hypertension, type 2 diabetes. So that's the first thing I should write down, guys, which are the comorbidities, diabetes and hypertension. And then the medications. So he he's taking hydrochlorothiazide. He's taking spironolactone, which is an aldosterone receptor blocker. So he's taking a diuretic aldosterone receptor blocker for his hypertension and metformin probably for his type 2 diabetes. Why do I write these medications, guys? Because... A lot of these new drugs will have drug interactions and contraindications as listed here. For example, he says here in this safety box, it's very important 
that's the second thing you should look at so the first thing you should look at guys is this paragraph right and the second thing you should look at is the safety box at the end the red safety box so here it's mentioning everything related to drug interactions so don't combine with insulin don't combine with loop diuretics and contraindications in patients who are on dialysis so if this patient were on dialysis i'm not going to give the drug and so that's really high yield to know now he's obese bmi is 31 respirations are normal everything else and obviously has fitting edema because of his um well i accidentally pressed sorry guys auscultation disclosed by basal mid crackles because of heart failure and now he's telling you trans thoracic echo shows increased size of the left atrium ventricle and left ventricular ejection fraction of 0.55 this is actually normal this patient has heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and this drug was made for those with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction so it's not even for our patient right so that's why the first paragraph is so important guys so why am i not gonna give this patient the drug i accidentally pressed so is it because of potential drug interactions with his other medications no he's not taking a loop diuretic right he's not taking insulin he's not on dialysis so no is it uh sh Melifly should be prescribed because of its simple dosing regimen well this patient mentioned that he really has a problem remembering his medications but let's see how many times this is taken this is taken once daily as written here in the first paragraph so yeah that's nice but is this the only thing we consider when prescribing medications that it's easy to administer? Of course not. Melifly should not be prescribed because the advertisement does not feature this patient's clinical syndrome. Yes, this is the correct answer, guys. This medication was specifically for those with reduced ejection fraction, but the patient in our question has heart failure reduced ejection fraction. So that's why the first thing you should do is diagnose the situation. Would, would it help or not? And number two, and that's why we should first read this paragraph. And number two, past medical history of the patient regarding comorbidities and medications. And all this will be figured out from the safety box at the end. It mentions the contraindications, drug interactions, and everything else you need to know. Anything else related to the question will be targeted and will ask you a specific thing, let's say about the table, let's say about the graph, and will be doable, right? It's all, you know, math and biostats. But the stuff I want you to focus on, because this is what's going to save you a lot of paragraphs and a lot of reading, is to do this, okay?